Hello and welcome back to a review with me Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. This week I've got a new bottle, one that's not been opened, so we're going to do an uncorking today and do a live first impressions of this whiskey. So as we can see it's a Craig Ellicate 13 year old. So I'll get it open first, get it in the glass, have a little chat about it, give it a wee minute to kind of breathe. Um, a nice pop. So, Craig Ellicate 13, Speyside Whiskey, but not your traditional Speyside, more or less in the heart of Speyside, but I'm sure I think it is. Craig Ellicate is a whiskey which, it's not a typical Speyside style of whiskey, you'd always kind of be elegant, softer, um, maybe a little bit lighter, but because Craig Ellicate and the way that they produce their whiskey is slightly different, slightly old school in the way that back in 1890, 1891, I think it was, is when a lot of the had worm tubs. And what the worm tubs are, condensers, are kind of cold water pools outside the distillery, just outside the wall from the uh, distills itself. There's the copper runs through this cold water internally, so it keeps it nice and cool. It thins down all the way out. And when the whiskey is distilling, going through the copper stills on a natural line um, arc, it's not got much of a bend in it at Craig Ellicky. All this copper contact and keeping it cool gives us really, it's, it's known to have like a meaty, heavy texture, very viscous, not meaty in flavour profile, well, we're about to find out, but more than that viscous, big mouthfeel. We have 46% ABV, we're non-shell filtered and we're natural colour. 13 years old as well, and it's this is part of their core range. Looking at whiskey, you don't see many 13-year-olds, um, odd numbers. that we fly in here that's joining us as well. You might like it as well. We don't see many odd numbers in whiskey with regards to core range. It's usually 12-year-old and maybe some, the odd number you'll get is maybe a 15. 21 and so forth. With Craig Ellicott, it's 13, 17, I think 23. But 2014 is when they brought these into play. This whiskey here has been matured both in bourbon and sherry cast. I think it's a 50-50 split at the start for most of its time. And then it finishes in another kind of seasoning in a first fill bourbon and a first fill sherry, I believe. That's what I was trying to find out. It's the only little bit I'm not too sure on the final makeup, but it is bourbon and sherry. No, it's to be a 50-50 split. It's a renowned bottle. It's quite obtainable as well with this. And it's just something different. Not many distilleries still use warm tub condensers, so it's quite different in that sense. I do love a good viscous style whiskey, something that is kind of coats the palate and it's just yeah, it's just there and at 46%, I'm hoping to get some good things out of it. So we'll get this on the nose, we'll get this on the palate, we'll get our first thoughts with it. I've not had, I've had this strand before, but not in a long time, so I don't remember too much about it, but we're about to find out. So on the nose, it's still got nice fruity, fruity notes to it, more your syrupy, like pineapple and peaches. There's like an undertone of like strawberry milkshake throth, if that makes sense. That could be the kind of thickness coming through this viscosity, maybe coming through in the nose. But that's peachy pineapple syrup and, and I'd say it's strawberry milkshake note to it as well. It's a sweeter style. So I'm going to say with the peaches and the pineapple, that's going to be more of the bourbon cast. Maybe this kind of strawberry note I'm getting is maybe that little split into the um, the sherry cast that they use. The legs on it as well. Just looking at it just now at the glass, hopefully this will do it justice. They're just sticking. And that's that real kind of thick, viscous style of whiskey that they're producing at Craig Ellicott. If you do this with some other drams that are even 46% but don't use the worm tubs and you put them side by side, you will probably see the other the other drams, eh, other distilleries, Speyside, coming down a little bit quicker, not sticking to the glass at the way this one is here. 
there's a bit of toast, like kind of toast in there now. It's like a toasted note, toasted, um, toasted wood, toasted oak. Maybe that kind of toasted peach and pineapple. Um, I mean, it's magic and I'm really enjoying that. Right, enough smelling it. Let's get this on the palate. Let's land everyone. Is thick, chewy, jar, chewy dram. That stays sweet. Those flavors from that kind of pineapple note, the toasty note, the peach note, that thickness viscosity is it's magic. Forty six percent. You, I don't think you can tell it's forty six percent. It's non chill filtered, natural color. It's a fantastic mouthfeel. It's a really, it's right up, the style of whiskey is right up my street. That kind of really good mouthfeel, good flavour profile, good in the nose. Heavy. Heavy is probably the way to describe it. It's nice and heavy. A little bit, I would say there's no spice, tiny bit of, um, would I even say burnt copper potentially, is that maybe just I'm getting too into the, to the worm tubs, but the sweetness is staying there, but not overly sweet, the heaviness, the meatiness of the style of whiskey as itself. I think counterbalances the, the sweetness that you get on the nose in the first place. It's great. Absolutely. The water's not changed much there for anything for me. Just it's more toasted now. I would say kinda uh um Toasted oak coming through, that more bourbon hit from it. If you like something, a whiskey that is going to make you draw your cheeks in, but not because it's sour or citrusy or anything in that sense, more about, I think, how whiskies can be. If you like a lighter whiskey, this probably isn't going to be your cup of tea. This isn't going to be the style for you. If you want something heavier, chewy. Probably a good way to say it's a chewy dram. This is going to be up your street. Can you get like a 13 year old? This is between 50 and 60 pounds you can pick it up for. So it's not crazy amounts, but I think it's a good value for money. Again, having a 13 year old, there's a lot of independent Craig Ellick out there as well. But having this the way that they want you to do it from the distillery, being a single malt, this is really good. My only kind of gripe is I am not huge on the branding of it, the, the kind of artwork and things. I think it's very busy, but it doesn't take anything away from it doesn't take anything away from the whiskey. I enjoy this a lot. This is a um, forgot how good this was. And I'm glad I've got another bottle and I need to say thank you to my friend Tommy for, for sorting that for me as well. But I'm going to go sit back and enjoy it more. I, I don't know if this will open up anymore. This is a very good, it's one of the whiskies I've had in a while that the very first pour has been very, very positive to, uh, first impressions. So I don't know if it can get better, but I'm hoping it doesn't get any worse. I'm going to go and sit back and finish this dram, but before I do so, I'd like to raise a glass for Paul McDonough, the, uh, who sadly passed away from the Bon Accord, who's been massive in the whiskey world throughout, especially in Glasgow itself, the Glasgow Whiskey Festival, and the Glasgow Whiskey Festival is something that really kind of uh, catapulted me into the whiskey world of enjoying whiskey as it was, so I've got a huge thanks to, to say to him, and which one was just on Wednesday there, so... Paul Slanger to you and hope you're having a dram up there buddy and 
um, thank you so much for helping me my my whiskey journey. You don't know how much you've helped without uh, me ever telling you. So I appreciate all the help. But I'll go and sit back and enjoy this for, for Paul and his memory. But as always, I've been Kevin from Giving Out on Whiskey. Join me next week. Let's talk whiskey. Slash.